Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Hey, Hotel Chronicles on the road working with one of my college teams. Um, but want to get a video in before going in today. Now, I get this question a lot on my Instagram, and to be honest with you, it always bewilders me why people ask this question. But when I really thought about it, I say, you know what? I get it. It's human nature to wonder, especially if you've been ghosted or if you were cheated on and, and he left you for the woman he cheated on you with, it makes sense, you know, it's a real question. But I, I want to help you understand this from a male perspective so you can kind of gauge it and it may be able to give you some closure. Now here's the thing, you gotta look at how your relationship ended with your ex when it's dealing with a new woman. So if your relationship ended because of a long affair so let's say your ex was having an affair with this woman cheating with this woman if y'all weren't married or if you were married and they were dealing with each other and then eventually you found out you said something it all blew up and then he decides to leave you for her in most cases i would say 90% of the cases, at the least 80% of the time, that new relationship is going to fail. And the reason why is because it was built on lies. What you got to understand is when something is built on lies, it's hard for it to stand. So that means for a period of time, he had to lie to her about his feelings for you and what you and him had going on. For a long time, he had to lie to you. So what happens is, is he developed this lying mentality to where he became like this savage of a man who just lies. And he became very deceptive and manipulative. And so when he did that, it shifted his personality. And so now here he is, he's used to, he's gotten used to gaming the system. He's trying to play games and he is like, he's feeling himself as, oh, I'm, I'm big pimp daddy, you know, I'm Mac man. You know, I can have all these women competing after me and competing for me and I'm juggling and I got so much game. So he starts to tell himself that. And what happens is, is when a man is playing that kind of game, he gets to a place of where it's a thrill. You know, it's a thrill, it's fun when you juggling two women and you are an insecure man. When you weak and you insecure, you have fun playing with the hearts and the lives of others because it's your entertainment. It becomes how you start to, you know, get your little buzz in, get your little kick in to feel like a man. And what happens is, you're like that when you come up around other guys and you've seen so many other guys do it and you thought they were cool you thought they were the mac daddy so now you get to be the mac daddy and it kind of reinforces this insecurity that's in you so that's what you got to realize from the male perspective what a man is kind of going through and so the thing about it is the other thing is when a relationship is started from an affair what you have to understand is that this man with this woman this woman became the vacation i would call it so what i mean is you got all the fussing the fighting the arguing and then he would go to her and have the vacation with her she was perfect because when she came into the knowledge to realize I'm fighting for this man. I'm competing for this man's love because he has another woman and he has a soul tie with her. It became a competition. And so when it became that competition, now things start to change because it's exhilarating for him when he goes over there. But then also she's faking and she's playing the game because she's trying to be perfect so anytime he come boom here goes some hot some hot food okay after the hot food okay here goes some hot in the sheets 
okay, you need a back rub, you need me to massage your scalp, you need to use, you need some money, you need whatever it is. She doing all of that because she want her a man. She want to beat you out for this man because, and I remember hearing women say, well, if a man is with another woman, that just means he's willing to commit. And now I got to get him to commit to me. And that's a lot of women's mentality. And some of y'all listening to these women on, on YouTube who like to play those kind of mind games and tell you to be that type of woman and all of that when that's the lowest place you could be in. But that's what that woman was doing. But guess what? When he has full time with her, see, before it was just part time. Let me pop in 30 minutes after work, 30 minutes before work. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, he telling you, oh, I got to get to work early today. Really, he's swinging by her place, you know, 6.30 in the morning. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, 7 in the morning. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. He telling you he got to get to work early because he got some extra work to do. Or he got to work another 30 minutes later. No, that's 30 minutes. He's spending at her place. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You go to sleep. He up texting. One lady, she wrote me the other day. She was like, I'm wondering why. You know, my man, he lost his job, and now he won't sleep in the room with me. He not sleeping in another room because he lost his job. He's sleeping in another room because he texting another woman. He on the text or the phone with another woman late night, and that's the time that he can give her. Ain't no man finna go from a comfortable bed to a couch or a mattress because he lost his job. That's like kicking kicking a man when he down. Ain't no man about to do that to himself. He if a man loses his job and he in love and you his only woman, he wanna be in the bed with you so he can rub and touch on something to try to calm down and soothe, you know, his his anxiety or whatever it may be. He in that other room so he could get them texts off. Or get them phone calls off and be getting them pictures and sending them pictures. That's what he doing. And and deleting it at the end of the night before he go to sleep. Okay, that's what you need to understand. So see, when men start to play these games, it's because he's doing what he's doing with her. But it's because he only has limited time. So it's a thrill. It's a thrill for her too. It's a thrill when you only have that limited time. And so what happens is when it goes from limited time to full time, now he get to realize, oh, her boo-boo don't smell like roses. That was when I was coming over here before she was spraying poopery. Uh, poopery sent me a check. She was spraying poopery in the toilet water. Now I'm over here getting a full whiff. Oh, wow. Oh, she can't cook everything. Because I was coming over here, you know, a little bit, I was to get her best meal. And she got three go-tos. But now when I'm tasting meal number four, number five, number six, now I'm struggling. Now I got irritable bowel syndrome. Oh, wow. She don't shower every day. So she got some soiling going on. But when I was just popping over here for the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, she was smelling delectable. So he started to realize, he started to say, ooh, you pick boogers? I ain't know you pick boogers in, in public. Now he started to, oh, you pluck your chin hairs in the car? Oh, wow. Oh, you leave your monthly floating in the toilet stool? Oh, my goodness. So now he calling his homeboy because he can't call you because you his ex. He can't call you and say, I done walked into a boo-boo storm. You know, I'm, I made a mistake. I didn't realize how good of a woman you were. I didn't realize how classy of a woman you were. Oh, my goodness. I'm over here. This woman was raised in a barn. I didn't realize that because she was doing everything perfect. That's what happens when the relationship was formed in an affair. He realized that this woman 
just as bad as you. He he was picking on you in his mind, thinking about everything that's wrong with you to give him excuses on why he should leave. But then he realized when he get over there, this woman got just as much, if not more, issues and problems and things going on than you did. And that's what a lot that's what a lot of men don't realize. So if you a man listening to this, that's what you need to realize. What you need to realize is that it the grass ain't greener. If you want the grass green, you got to pay for a lawn man or you got to get out there and you got to work in it. And you got to pray I mean, you got to pay for that little stuff to be sprinkled in that grass. Or you got to go get you some artificial grass if you want that grass to be green. It just ain't going to be green on its own. You got to do the work that it take. And that's what a lot of men don't understand. And so what happened is he went from you blaming you for everything, all of your flaws. And he magnified your flaws and turned your flaws into deal breakers. Then he get over there with her and then he start to realize, oh, wow. She got just as many flaws, but now her flaws, so let's say you got 10 flaws and she got 10 flaws. But if you had to rank those flaws on a scale of 10, your average out of your 10 flaws is like a five. But her 10 flaws, her average is like a seven, you know, 10 being the absolute worst you could deal with. Hers is like a seven. So now he's like, oh Lord, I don't walked into more problems. But I didn't realize this because I was giving my ex 60 to 75 percent of my time and giving this woman over here, you know, 40 to 25 percent of my time. And now I'm over here with this woman full time, 100 percent of my time. And I can't give my ex any of my time because I'm embarrassed. And now I look all these problems. So, see. That's when that relationship is going to fail, when it started from an affair, when it started from cheating. And this is the thing. Men have such a big ego. Men hate to admit when we're wrong. We hate to admit when we've done something wrong, when we've made a mistake. And so a man will go in this other situation, and he'll stay in this other situation. Y'all got to forgive him for being in bed. I'm just comfortable. I'm just rather be laying down than be sitting up in the old chair. And a man will stay in that mess just out of ego. He cannot bring himself to say, I made a mistake. To tell his mama, his daddy, his best friend, his co-workers, I made the mistake of my life. This woman running me crazy. This woman spending every dime. Dimes I ain't even been paid yet. She done, she done put on credit. And, and now it's on credit. And now I got 24% interest on the credit. This woman is a black widow. And I didn't even know it. He can't bring himself to that point. And he want to come crawling back. Now see some of y'all. Now this another. This, this, a, this a nuance now. Y'all remember that vocabulary word. This is nuance now. See, some of y'all have experienced a man who left you and then came back. Oh, I miss you. I want to be with you. You know, I feel like we really could work this out. I really been missing you. Mm-hmm. They don't miss you. What it is is he didn't want you. Figured he would take a gamble, go to somebody else. That gamble didn't pay off. He lost his, he lost his shirt in the casino, and now he want to come back to the safe house, to the safe zone, to the safe place, to the no judgment zone. Cause if you put up with a dirty, stinking musky behind, and didn't judge him, she went over there, and 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 he went over there, and she was clowning him. By this dirty, stinking musky behind. She she emasculated him. She uh, emasculated. She emasculated him. She she ripped him to shreds. She took him for everything he was worth. He, he she was dogging him out. He literally got bit by a black widow and he hurting. 
he hurting and she might have left him because when she was getting them 50 percent 25 percent of the time she thought everything was gravy because she thought he bathed every day she didn't know his toenails one clip because he kept his socks on she didn't know that his toe that he had fungus on his toes and you was loving him for them brown toes and now she like whoa your toe your toenail bed is brown instead of pink wow she hadn't smelt the gas because he was holding it in when he was around her and turning his head to burp. So instead of letting it come out there, he bringing it up here and just turning his head or walking to the kitchen real quick like he going to get something to drink. Going to the bathroom like he got to pee in here and trying to pass all the gas and then spraying the air freshener. So now he done come with her 100% and she like, mm, mm, you don't bathe every day? Oh my goodness, your toenail look like that? Oh, that's your morning breath? They don't love each other. That was lust. That was lust. And so a lot of times, that's what happened, and that's why he got to come back to you. So they done went over there, and they done realized, he done went over there and realized now, lust can't build a relationship. Lust can't sustain a relationship. And he realized this woman over here don't even love me for everything about me. The good, bad, and the ugly. She just loved the good and the great. And I was faking. That's what he telling himself. And I was faking. But now when she see the bad and the ugly, and she sees how she see how ugly my ugly is, she like, she can't do it. But you was loving me for everything. That's what he's saying about you. You love me for the good, bad, and the ugly. And I didn't realize that. But guess what? Now he don't deserve you. Now he don't deserve you, and that's why you shouldn't be taking exes back if he left you. Now, if you had to leave him, if you kick him to the curb for him to get a lesson, now that's a different story on whether you want to take him back. But if he walked out on you, you should never take him back because he chose and he made a conscious decision that you ain't what I want. I want this out here, the grass green over there. And then he went and found out the hard way. So he shouldn't be allowed to come back. But that's what happened. Now see, this the thing. This the thing. Is on the flip side of this, sometimes when you lose a man to an affair and you knew of it and you stayed, what happened is you diminished your role in his life. You relinquished your power. So when you found out about an affair and you stayed and you went into competition mode with this other woman and it became less about him and more about your ego, you lost. So you got some blame in there too if this, if this happened. If this ain't happened, then it ain't on you. But if you found out that he had another woman and you went to competing, and you went, uh, let me cook my best meal. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in here. It's a ragu and swagu, and I'm gonna put the olives in here and this here garlic. And you went to, you know, trying to get your little stuff going. Brought your salt bay in there, and you just doing everything. You got your lingerie. You done went and got your uh, cucumber melon from the uh, Bath and Body Works. You got your love potion or whatever it's called from Victoria's Secret. You got your nice, you done got your new drawers. You done let go of the drawer with the string hanging off the side of it. And now you got your new draw, the, the uh, 5 for 20 out of Victoria's Secret or wherever you go. And now you every day, you prancing. You looking good, smelling good. You getting in the bed with that cucumber melon. You can't even fall asleep. You smelling so strong. And, but you trying to make an impression for him. And he and he's over there looking at you with a side eye like, this the woman that I thought was classy and respectable? You acting different now. What's going on with you? Oh. So you ain't got no class. So you really ain't classy. You fake classy with your bachelors, with your masters. You fake classy, cause you competing. Mm. 
You ain't classy. Mm. So you ain't no better than her. So this is what he start to go through. This is what he start because you competing. So what happened is a lot so on some of these cases, you helped him leave because you stooped to her level. Now see his now this the nuance here now. Caveats and nuances. The t-shirt might be up under this video. I don't know. The t-shirt might be under the video. Caveats and nuances. Now, this the thing is when you started to compete, he gave her more credit than he gave you because she didn't even know about you. She had she didn't even know about you yet. You found out about her because of the text messages you read. And if you didn't call her and talk to her personally, she still didn't know that he had a girlfriend or a wife. Or when she found out, he didn't consider it the same as he did with you. Because he assumed you would have the strength to walk away because of him cheating on you. But with her... He looked at it as, I didn't technically cheat on her because she didn't even know about you until everything hit the fan. So she actually was a classy woman and thought we had something real and something genuine and didn't know I was a dog. So now that this thing came out, I can't hold it against her because it's my fault. This is what he telling himself. Because it's my fault that I misled her. You see what I'm saying? And he doesn't consider your plight. He's not considering the fact that maybe you want to stay because y'all done brought children into the world. Y'all done planned a family. Y'all done got a place together. Y'all done had, you got all these dreams. Or y'all done got married in front of the Lord, the pastor, all your friends and family. He's not considering the fact that that might be why you want to stay. He's not considering all of your fear and your worries and of, of starting over. He's not considering all of that. He's just thinking like, oh, well, this is what, this what it is. You know, she ain't classy because she found out about this and now she want to compete. She want to stay. When this woman over here, she didn't even know. She thought we had something real. So I can't hold that against her now competing. Because also, I told her, he done told her that, that you crazy, psycho, chasing him, manipulative, you know, neurotic, psychotic. He done told her all this stuff about you. So he like, I can't even hold it against her because of the narrative that I done painted with her concerning my woman concerning you and so he starts to discredit you and give her credit that she don't even deserve and it's all so his mind could come to a place come to a conclusion and have closure around his messy decision he's trying to give himself an out an excuse a reason to do what he does and then this is what he's gonna do this is what he has done this is what he did this is why he did what he did or what he's getting ready to do if you if you in a fair right now you're dealing with the other woman right now what he does is is he takes and he pushes you pushes you pushes you and makes you step out of character and makes you do things that make you look crazy so he gonna push you to the point that you done grab something out that kitchen and you ready, you ready to go. He say one wrong thing and he could get it. Or you done took and bleached the clothes, you know, soaked all his clothes or whatever it may be. Throw them into the pool, you know, whatever it may be. You done flew off the handle. So now he get to go and paint the narrative to all the mutual friends and your family. Look at my lip. Look what she did. Look at my lip. I'm bleeding. You know, he taking pictures. He sent it to everybody doing his PR campaign. He got to do a smear campaign to make you look crazy. Knowing that 
any human being pushed to that point will react the same way. He knowing that he would have react worse if the shoe was on the foot of the foot and you was cheating on him like that. He knew it would have been in the newspaper what he did. But but he taking what you did and holding it against you. Are you crazy? That's why I don't want to be with you now. Because you're crazy. You're unstable. Man, I don't even want my kids around you. Man, I can't raise my kids with you because you're unstable. And he's not taking responsibility that he the unstable one. And he's the reason you unstable because he unstable. And he affecting your life because you really love him and you really care for him. He going to take that and use it against you. See, that's what the man does when he an immature grown boy just thinking about himself. You see what I'm saying? So I want you to understand this here. Now, hey, now I just I want y'all to realize this is a magic basketball shirt. Now, I don't want y'all to think I believe in magic. Now, this is the Orlando magic shirt that just hit me now because I'm saving sanctified. I don't do no Harry Potter. And so back to what I was saying. That's what he does so that you can feel crazy, act crazy. So now the people on the outside, they start to say, oh, well, that's why he cheated on her. Because she back crazy. That's why he did that. Well, I would do it too. What man wouldn't do that? What they don't realize, what they not privy to, because you don't have the wherewithal, you don't have the mental capacity to go do your own smear campaign, your own PR campaign, not smear, because you don't you don't have an interest in smearing his name or doing PR. So you just taking the brunt of things and you being made out to look like you crazy, but you don't even have the time and the energy to go to each person and say, well, this is what really happened. He was already cheating. He was already in an affair when I started to act out the way I acted out. Y'all thinking that I was acting out and I was doing this the whole time and that's what pushed him to do that. That's not the case. See, you only had the time and the energy to do that, but then you also don't even know who all he done told that. So when you up there at Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's send me a check. When you up there at Trader Joe's, people looking at you like, Oh, hey, Lindsay, how are you? How's everything going with you and Doug? Oh, yeah. That's so heartbreaking. You know, you deserve better. I understand what you're going through. I went through that with Johnny. I understand. And you looking and, and you kind of like, because you could tell she judging you because she didn't heard something about you. That's one side of the story. And so now you get ready. You just ready to leave Ralph's. Ralph Simmons, you just ready to leave Ralph because here you are, you like, man, I don't even feel like finish grocery shopping because these people looking at me like I'm crazy. You know, these people, it, it seems like the whole world know all my business but me. I don't even know all the business. You know more of the story than I know of the story. And that's how you start to feel, and that's that's what he done did. He done set it up like that. He don't, nah, here, go, here y'all finna go in the comment. Yeah, that's what an end does. The end, I ain't talking about slave term. I'm talking about the other end word that, that, that y'all using. That's what he does. Guess what? May be the case, but this is what every man does who who, who cheats. This is what every man does who cheats. And so this this just the standard, okay, across the board. This is what every man does. And then so guess what? When he built on that right there type of foundation of that lies, cheating, deception, manipulation, all of this right here, the mind games, that next relationship, it's going to fail. And if it doesn't fail, it's failing, but they just not letting it go. They just holding on to it. They just have surrendered submitted and settled for just chaos and they just like we just gonna be in chaos we just finna live in the here chaos that's all that's what it has come to that's what it has come to 
point blank period, y'all don't even get caught up on it. Now see, will his next relationship fail if y'all relationship ran its course and then y'all broke up and then he met somebody? That's different. Or if it ran its course and he was done in his mind, he had quit in his mind, but he wasn't in an affair. He maybe had done some stuff, but he wasn't courting another woman. His other stuff was wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And it was just kind of little one-offs, but he wasn't courting another woman. And then he met this woman, had a couple conversations or a conversation and realized, wow, I'm done over here. And then I have, but I've met this woman here. So then he cuts you. He cuts you cold turkey. Lets you go. I'm done. He comes to you as a man and say, me and you done. It may hurt. It may sting you because he didn't write you a four page letter. It may hurt because he didn't do it with a rose. It may hurt because he did it in text message or he did it on a voicemail and he didn't do it in person. He maybe didn't do it in person because he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want you to have the opportunity to do what you felt like doing. So he had to do it by phone or voicemail or voice memo or text message and get some distance because he didn't know how you're going to respond. Now, if it end like that, that's when you can't worry about what he got going on and if it's going to fail or not. That's when you could be setting yourself up for failure by watching what he got going on. And now you paying attention to his Facebook, you paying attention to her Facebook, you trying to watch all their moves on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever they posting at, Snapchat, you got fake accounts, you watching it every day and you become consumed with it. You got to stop right there. You got to stop what you're doing. You got to stop doing that. Being Columbo, Blues Clues, Sherlock Holmes, NSCI, or NCSI, whatever it's called. You got to stop that and you got to move on with your life. You got to go to mymentor.life. That's a website, mymentor.life, not .com. You got to go to mymentor.life. You got to book a session with me or one of the other coaches. You might need four sessions. You got to watch an hour of video every day on YouTube. You got to get the podcast, the Tony Gaskin Show, listen to all them old podcasts because I ain't uploading no more. You got to listen to all the hundred plus old ones. You got to get the book, A Woman's Influence. You got to get the book, make it work. Then, see, this how you heal. This how you heal. Now, that just wasn't no commercial. That's real work that got to be done. That wasn't a commercial. That's the real work that you got to be done. And you doing this instead of chasing him on social media, chasing her on social media. because And what you got to realize is he didn't carry both of y'all for three months leading y'all along. He didn't carry y'all for six months or a year. If that was the case, the first... 30 minutes of this video is what I was talking about for you. So rewind, listen back to it. Listen back to the first 30. If he was cheating, if he was in an affair, full-blown, full-fledged affair. But if y'all ran y'all course, he bet somebody and then cut you off immediately. Or y'all ran y'all course, broke up, and then met somebody the next day, the next week, the next month, the next three months, that's totally different. That means that y'all relationship had exhausted all its options and y'all was done. Y'all was done anyways. So now you can't sit there and say, oh, is that next one going to fail? Now, here's the thing. Now, this the caveat is it still may fail if the woman he chose is less than you meaning that she doesn't have any class you know she don't got class she is you know trashy you could tell you know she nasty what she post online she thirst trapping 
and she's like a, a fantasy woman, meaning that she paint the picture online to men, you know, licking that finger, taking them picture, sucking on that finger. I'm the woman of your dreams. She paint that picture. She a Jezebel spirit. When you see that, their relationship going to fail, even if y'all did run y'all course and he cut it. But when you look at this woman and you like, she look like a classy woman to me. Like, she dressed nice. She presents herself well. She got a good job. She this, that. And the third and the fourth, she, I can't poke any holes in it. Now, she might not be the cutest thing the Lord done made, but, and you just saying that because, you know, you might be hating or it might be true. She might not be the cutest thing the Lord done made. But if everything in her character seems to be on the up and up and he wasn't juggling y'all, you know, cheating on both of y'all, but he cut you cold turkey, went on to her, then it's a possibility that that's going to work. And you might not want to hear that, but yeah, it may work. And it is going to be a miserable show for you if you're going to sit there and focus on them and be watching them instead of doing your work and healing and growing so you can attract your prince charming so you can attract the man for you because what you got to realize is if he let you go he's not your husband your husband is never going to let you go so you got to get him out your system as fast as possible you got to drink some castor oil your uh you know whatever bepto pepto bismol whatever you got to do you got to get that out your system because you need to detox, flush him out your system, start weakening that soul tie so that you can be fresh faced and glowing and attract your Prince Charming because you need him to come in your life because you need to get on with your show. Like they say, one monkey don't stop no show. You can't let him stop your show. You got to keep it moving. But if you sit in there and you fixating off of their relationship and what they got and you in my Instagram Q&A every night, I just want to know, you know, we broke up and he's in another relationship within one month. I want to know if their relationship is going to last. Listen, y'all broke up. That's different than he cheated on me and left me for the affair. That's different if y'all broke up. And then he moved on. So you're going to put yourself through a lot of misery and pain sitting there watching that. Because when he leaves you and he moves on, that's him making a conscious decision that he's stepping up to what he wants. Now, he might be stepping down. So if you really need this type of closure in your life, the, the only way that you can determine is if it's going to last or not is if he's becoming a better man or if she's as good or better of a woman than you. And when you say, well, ain't no such thing as a woman better than me, it could be something like you curse and she doesn't. Uh, you don't pray and she does. You was with him on the first night or in the first month, she making him wait. He could see those qualities, those choices as better. So you might not feel that those choices make you less than her. But the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Perception is reality. So if you was on your bike early and then she making him wait, he views her as more of a prize. So what you got to do is learn from any mistakes that you made you got to watch the game film one time i said watch the game film and, and women was writing tony what channel is that on what movie is that where can i find that movie i'm that's not a movie when i say watch the game film i'm saying athletes watch the film from their game that they played the day before they watch the film to see what mistakes they made so when I say watch the game film, I'm saying you got to look at your relationship and see what you did wrong so that you can own up to your part of it. Because cause guess what? 
if you still want him, then that must mean he's not a trash man. Because while I'm saying this, I already know it's a certain strand of women who got a certain strand of DNA ready right now in the comments. Oh, so what you trying to say is it's my fault that I got to accept blame for him leaving me? Oh, I don't agree with that. And that's what I'm tired of. When does the man have to accept responsibility? Guess what? He got to accept responsibility. It's another video for him. This video for you. So what you got to do is you got to accept your responsibility. Because if he left you and you still want him, that means he must not be the most terrible thing in the world. That must mean that you think he a good man. Now, if he trash, then you shouldn't want him. And if he trash and you want him, what does that say about you? Because don't nobody want to be in a garbage can with trash but other trash. So, so which one is it? So if you think he a good man and he left you on a conscious decision and you still want him, then that means you need to look at your game film to see what you did, to see if it's anything that you need to work on before your next relationship so that you don't be on your bike in the first month and cursing like a sailor, drinking like a fish, smoking like a chimney, and doing all of those things that you may have done. Nagging, you know, always complaining, always insecure, always starting a fight, always got something to talk about, negative, you know, bitter Betty, negative Nancy, doubting Dana, all this stuff that you could have been doing, you need to identify. Let him do his work. Let him do his work. Because guess what? He might show up and glow up like I did. Because I was trash. I was trash. But I'm a king now. I'm a real man now. I showed up and glowed up. You hear what I'm saying? So any of my exes, when they look now, they they got to look at their game film. Cause, Cause now I I upgraded. And so sometimes, but when I upgraded, I had to upgrade. Because I wasn't gonna be able to keep my wife unless I became a better man. So that's what you got to realize. And so if you single right now and you getting ready for a relationship, or if you in a relationship right now, you got to make sure that you're not complacent. I always say this. To when I'm talking with the athletes, I tell them, if you get complacent, you will get replaced. If you be complacent, you will be replaced, whichever way you want to say it. I don't know which one. Uh, proper grammar, I don't need you to tell me in the comments. If you get complacent, you will get replaced. So what I mean by that is if you're not growing as a woman, and this man is growing as a man, and he wants more, he wants better, but you comfortable where you at, you gonna get left. So if you know you got a good man and you know you need to grow, you need to stop cursing with the trash mouth. You need to stop watching that junk TV, that sorry reality TV. When you see your man, all he doing is listening to podcasts, trying to grow, and you sitting there wanna watch Housewives and Lust and Hip Hop all the time. You gonna get left. So understand that. And vice versa. Vice versa. If you're a man watching this and you see your woman trying to grow and she listening to podcasts, she reading books, and all you wanna do is play Xbox or PS4, you about to get left. This is what you gotta understand. This is what you gotta understand. So understand this. If your man left you. For legitimate reasons, you need to suck it up and get over it. You need to do the work. If you're sitting there and you're sulking 
and you're not on my mentor.life, you're not reading the books, you're not watching the YouTube videos all the way to the end, you're going to stay stuck. And your reality TV going to be his and her Instagram and Facebook. And you're going to be M-I-S-E-R-A-B-L-E. You remember how little boots it said I E D E P E N D E N T. You finna be M I S E R A B L E. Miserable. You hear me? And I hope I spelt them things right. But forgive me if I miss me a letter. But you about to be miserable. And you know why? Because y'all relationship ran its course. It was over with. And he moved on with his life. Let the man move on so you can move on because he's not your husband. He might be a better fit for somebody else and it's a better fit for you. But unless you willing to do this, unless you willing to open them hands and let go, you're going to be holding on to somebody that is a figment of your imagination. You still lying down, sleeping with him, and he in a whole nother bed with another woman. You still going on dates with him in your mind, and he on a whole nother, he at Ruth Chris with another woman. You gotta let it go. Good, bad, or ugly, whether he did it the, the way I talked about in the first 30, or whether he did it the way I'm talking about in this second 30, you gotta let it go. So here's what you gotta do. Because this is all what, what y'all want to ask. Well, if he moved on, is it going to last? And I say, you asking, you worrying about the wrong thing. If you from somewhere where I'm, like where I'm from, we had a saying that said, you worrying about the wrong thing. When somebody answering, asking questions and, and tiptoeing on something, you worrying about the wrong thing. That's what you got to hear today. When I and I this is what I tell the women on Instagram, but I say I'm gonna just answer the I'm gonna answer the question because y'all keep asking the question. So let me just help you some kind of way get past this little raggedy question. You worry about the wrong thing. So what that means is this is what you got to do. You're gonna have to create you a day schedule. You got to get you a day planner. I got one in my book bag. You got to create you a, you got to get you a day planner. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to plan your day out by an hour or by a half hour. So this is just an example. You're, you're based on your work schedule, you just work around this. 6 a.m., wake up. 6 a.m., uh, now brush your teeth because you don't want to be swallowing bacteria. It's going to make your stomach hurt. So get up, go brush your teeth, get that morning breath off for you. 6 to 7 a.m., this is really my schedule because... I don't work nobody's job. You work somebody's job, you gotta do some you gotta do something different. Six to seven, reading the Bible and praying. Seven to eight, something else. Eight to nine, something else. If you go to work from nine to five, then that's work, but you got a lunch break. On lunch break, you need to be listening to this here video. If you missed yesterday's video, you need to be catching a video. Every day you need to be living. Why are you eating for a season now? It ain't always, it might be for a month. The way you tell your friend, you t you let your friends know, listen, ain't going to be able to go to the cafeteria. Ain't going to be able to eat lunch with you because I'm, I'm trying to heal, I'm trying to grow. So while I'm eating, while I'm smacking on this sandwich or this salad, I'm listening to this something that's helping me grow. And then after work, you got some five to six. If you got children, then you got their stuff in there. You know, you got some six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine. If you got children, they in bed. If you ain't got children, you ain't got to worry about that. But you got some 8 to 9, you got some 9 to 10, then boom, bedtime might be 10.30. Okay, lights out. But in, 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 in your day schedule, you need to put something for every B. Remember the three Bs. Brain, feed your mind. Brand, work on something that you can't be fired from. Your blog, your new company, your nonprofit organization, your t-shirt line, your YouTube channel, your life coaching certification, um, getting whatever you're working on. If you need to be certified as a life coach, go to TonyGassonAcademy.com. Use the coupon code MYMENTOR. You in there. You need to be working on it. And your body. So your body means you planning your breakfast. Unless you intermittent fasting, you planning your breakfast. You planning your lunch. You planning your snacks. You planning your dinner. So 
Your breakfast is a healthy, well-balanced breakfast, okay? You're not eating a glazed donut from Krispy Kreme. Your lunch is a healthy lunch. You're not eating leftover Popeye's chicken. Your snacks, you eating some granola. You chewing on some almonds. You know, some kind of so cashews. You doing something that's healthy. You're not eating a Twinkie or Oreos, dipping it in milk. You eating some healthy on your snack. Your mid-morning snack, your mid-afternoon snack. Your dinner is a healthy, well-balanced. You got some green on that plate, okay? That might be all you have on that plate if you vegan or vegetarian or, or you pescatarian, which means you just eat the fish, but it's healthy, okay? And then you might have your little nighttime little snack, another little granola or some, some almonds or something like that. So you planning your meals, and in there, you got 30 minutes of working out every day. Every day. If that's walking around the neighborhood in the morning, and then coming and showering, because you could be listening to the Bible on audio, or you could be listening to the book. If you if you don't listen to the Bible, you don't read the Bible front of the cover, and you read it, you know, you just read a chapter, then you got more time, you listening to a video. You walk around the cul-de-sac, if you live in a neighborhood, if you live in, the, in an apartment complex, you might walk around a complex. Now, you can't do that if you got little ones in the house, so you might need to jog in place. You might need to do body weight squats, do 50 squats, do some crunches, do some jogging, in, do some jump rope. But you're working out 30 minutes, either in the morning before work, on your lunch break, which you really don't want to get sweaty and soggy and then got to be sitting in your chair because you're stinking up your chair at work. So be careful when you're working out on lunch break and then you can't go take no shower because you're sitting there soggy for the rest of the day. But after work, you might get off work and then you do your 30-minute walk, you know. But you working out 30 minutes a day, seven days a week, no ifs, ands, and buts about it, and you eating healthy. So now you got the brain, the brand, the body and then guess what on part of the brain this mean youtube this mean podcast this mean audio books or you're reading the book and it also means coaching counseling and or therapy so you may do you may be doing therapy and coaching you may be doing just therapy you may be doing just coaching depending on what you need that's what you're doing okay and if you wonder, yes, my arm and my shoulder is very strong. How I sit here for an hour, yes, I'm extremely strong, okay? Strong as an ox, I'm just fine. Somebody asked me about that in a comment before. How you sat like that for an hour? I'm, I'm, I'm a monster, okay? I'm very strong. And so, guess what? You working on yourself. And now, with every day passing, you healing. It's been some people that have commented. And I ain't asked them for that comment, but it was a lady recently. She said, look... You need to hire Tony Gaston to be your coach because I did it and it helped me heal. You know why? It's not me. It's you doing the work. When you take steps, for every step you take, God taking two more steps on your behalf. When you do the work, you create momentum so it's going to come back to you. That's what you got to understand. Just you taking action. It's going to unlock your mind and open your spirit to receive, and you're going to be blessed. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. That's what I need you to understand, is that it's you doing the work. It ain't the coach that you're dealing with. The coach, that's just a vessel. That's just a conduit. You're just talking to that person. It's you talking. you solving your own problems by taking action and creating momentum in your life. That's what you've got to understand, okay? And so, now listen to me on this here now, okay? Listen to me on this. So, you got your day schedule, and you're working on the three Bs, and you're not focusing on your ex. You're not checking Facebook, Instagram of his or the new woman. And you stop worrying about and stop asking yourself, is that going to last? Is he going to come back? Don't wait on him to come back. If he didn't want to be with you, if he didn't do what it take to be with you, then you shouldn't worry about him coming back. If he come back, okay, you, you cross that bridge when you get there. But don't you go build the bridge and be done drown trying to build a bridge because you ain't got no crane. You out there building the bridge by hand, hoping that 
hey, hey baby this is something you can walk back over into my life because I'm standing still that ain't what you want to do that ain't what you need to be doing go on about your business move on with your life and go on do it what, what you called to do walk in your purpose and if he wants you he got to build a bridge or find a bridge and get back to you catch up to you and beg for your forgiveness on bending knee and then he got to be working for you showing you that he deserved to be back in your life hey this Tony guys can I, I'll be honest with you every video I do that I could do an hour I honestly could, could do two hours I honestly could do four hours it's that many caveats and nuances that's why you need that t-shirt that's up under this and thank y'all for who, who got that t-shirt you know it don't really you know do a lot but it's just cool to me you know just to have my old t-shirt like that because I'm not in the t-shirt business like like a lot of guys but I appreciate that support and so typically the picture right up under this here and it's come from Teespring they quality ain't the greatest YouTube need to find somebody else because Teespring quality ain't the greatest but you get it it's just about support they ain't trying to get for New York Fashion Week not to be on nobody runway but I want you to understand the Lord ain't called me past an hour yet so that's why you need to listen to different videos and just make you a playlist and get it in your spirit because each one gonna have a different caveat or nuance in it and you're gonna be able to put it all together like a puzzle piece and it's gonna help you get the strength and the wisdom and the clarity that you need to move forward in your life but hey this Tony Gaskin God bless you and we'll talk soon hopefully I can get a video up my team that I'm working with getting ready to go into a conference tournament so I'm gonna be there you know with them Lord willing and then after that going to the NCAA tournament Lord willing that goes well so I may be on the road here and there on these videos but God bless you we'll talk soon